Welcome to Fused Logic. I'm your host, Walter Schwabe, and I'm joined today with Honorable Doug Griffiths, who's the Minister of Municipal Affairs, and I don't mean to laugh and smile when I say that, Doug, but you know what? It's, uh, as you said when you got in the studio today, you're trying to get used to hearing that every day, and I've got to get used to saying it, which is really <laughs> cool, because you know how I goofed up on our last show about uh, Battle River Rainwright, and uh, so, you know, I wanted to make sure I got it right today, so I did. Welcome back. Thank you. It's good to be back. So, okay, let's, uh, let's get caught up. It's 2012, uh, you got the new job, and uh, municipal affairs. You know, uh, let's talk about uh, what you've got on the go here now. Obviously, you hit the ground running, I would assume. Yeah, yeah, we have hit the ground running. It's been a pretty intense few months. Uh, probably the, the biggest challenge I've had is getting used to being called minister. <laughs> I, I actually, I, I have to tell you, I was at uh, AMDNC, Walking down the hallway half on the third day, I think, and uh, I heard somebody hollering, Minister, Minister, Minister. And I thought, who isn't answering the question? <laughs> it was me. So I thought, what is ignorant? Oh, whoops. It's me. But I, I've, uh, I did hit the ground running because everything I've worked on for the last close to 10 years now has been about building better communities. I ran in the leadership campaign on it. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty excited to have been put in this portfolio. So we've, uh, we've, <laughs> I don't, I don't even know where to start. We're working on new home warranty issues. We're working on the municipal sustainability strategy to make sure that our communities are viable. Um, it, it's fantastic that the announcement came out yesterday about the uh, broadband finishing out that last mile, or mm -hmm. I always refer to it as the first mile, uh, around uh, to our rural communities. There's, there's, just, there's so many exciting things going on right now. We've got the, the civic charter issue that we're working on. Uh, of course, we're always working on rural development along with agriculture, so it's just it's exciting. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, the, the the first mile, as you mentioned it. Um, you know, b being in the internet side of the business uh, world, that has been something that I've been. You know, I mean, the supernet. Hey, this is excellent. Four hundred and twenty-two communities in Alberta, uh, but what about that last mile, right? And that's the thing that's kind of been orphaned. We, I think that uh, in some ways. We're waiting for, for not government but business to come in and solve that problem. Mm -hmm. and, and it didn't quite do it because obviously in a rural situation you've got a ranch and then you've got several mm -hmm. kilometers and then you've got another ranch and you don't have this con condensed um, audience of, or customers. So what is it about that last mile you know, mandate letter that, that is going to happen there? Can you help us understand a little bit better? Well, a, a lot of people who... Uh who talked about the last mile or the first mile, uh, knew that uh, some of the challenges go with the fact that there isn't enough density in remote or rural locations uh, for the private sector to come in. Because what the SuperNet did was bring uh, a SuperNet connection to a spot within a community. And then private sector was supposed to be the internet service provider that would then distribute it around. But there right. are still challenges uh, even getting that broadband connection into the community with having the density. Right. So this helps with... Uh, putting up towers, uh, any other, other connections that need to be established, like radio communication and stuff, so that you can get beyond the, the town or the community that might be 500 people and still not have the density or 200 right. people and reach the rural community, which may add another 1,000 people to the population and actually give it the, the economies of scale to make it worthwhile. So the thing that this helps with, obviously, is, is going to help close that digital gap, the digital divide between rural and, and urban. Uh, so then the next step becomes, okay, now what do we do with it in terms of a better community and how, what the community can use this broadband for? What are some suggestions that you would give municipalities out there, recommendations? And obviously you've written a book on this whole thing. <laughs> but, but let's talk a little bit about some of the recommendations about what a municipality might use that increased bandwidth for. Well, I've, I've never got anyone to, uh, to accept it yet or buy into it yet. But one of the notions I always had was to and I've mentioned it to the ministers now who are, are and they're, they're actually quite interested in it, uh, and I believe the Premier is quite interested in it too, is, is Alberta Web TV, some communication tool. Uh, look, a, a community of uh, what doesn't matter the size could take out an advertisement on page four in the Toronto Star for $4,000 uh, to advertise you know, the benefits of living in their community. That's one day, that's one paper in one community, and it's gone. But $10,000 could go a long way to do uh, recorded video uh, advertising, which can be on the Internet forever. And it, that's why I always said it's um, the Internet that last mile isn't really the last mile, it's the first mile. Because mm -hmm. it's not about bringing the world to the community. It's about taking that community 
to the rest of the world. Right. And if you imagine being able to advertise to 7 billion people around the world on the quality of life, on uh, even in remote locations, there's lots of people around the world that would love to have a little piece of land and some space, some peace and quiet, the security and safety their communities have, the quality of their education, the health care, those sorts of opportunities that now will allow our communities to find to capitalize on their identity by advertising to 7 billion people. And that, I think, is one of the first things they could do. So I think that's a fantastic idea, obviously. Um, you know, this is an example of video, obviously, being used. But so I think that's great. I think, you know, you'd mentioned also earlier switching gears. Now you said the municipal sustainability strategy. And I remember during the, during the race, you used to sort of say, look, I don't think we should be talking about sustainability. Right, in, in the sense of the word. Um, so, t tell us about your thoughts about even though that that's the that's kind of like a standard language used in government, mm -hmm. right? It's a sustainability and and, it, and the name of the report came out before I was the minister. I sure, changed. I use the word viability or or vitality or vibrancy, but yeah, right. sustainability sounds like status quo. Uh, but the whole purpose of the MSS, the Municipal Sustainability Strategy, um, is to ensure the municipalities move, well, it starts to focus on issues like dissolution. We have small municipalities that ask themselves, should we dissolve? So the government does a study, and then we have a vote uh, in the community on whether or not they should dissolve. Without uh, really going to some vital questions about whether or not the community is really sustainable, whether or not there are some solutions that they can partner with other municipalities on, or uh, new business opportunities that they can capitalize on, whether or not they really are viable over the long term, and if they are, what they're going to do about it. It's Right now, the strategy is very uh, reactive. Uh, well, it's, it's almost too late. Let's have a vote on whether we should, we should uh, dissolve. And instead, we, we need to have a progressive strategy that capitalizes on the opportunities. Right. And that's what this new strategy will do. So we've, uh, we're really working hard on that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you've just tuned in, uh, we're joined here on Fusologic TV with the Honorable Minister Doug Griffiths, the Minister for Municipal it's Affairs, uh, <laughs> bundled up for today's weather here in Alberta. The other thing about attracting people from around the world is they get to experience this lovely weather from That's time right. to time. There's nothing we can do about it. Um, so if you have some questions for the Minister, let us know on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter account is at FusedLogic. You can also reach us uh, on our chat room here at the show. Ask a question. We'll put it to the minister here, and uh, and make sure that uh, you know he has a chance to answer it. Um, going back to um, you had mentioned um, uh, one of the other things was the the home warranty. I didn't expect to kind of hear that. Uh, what, what's going on with that? What don't we have good warranties here in Alberta? Well, warranties right now um, aren't mandatory. Uh, about eighty percent of the homes that are constructed have a warranty. Uh, and there are four great warranty companies providing warranty service now. Uh, but we have challenges around this province. Everyone's familiar with the leaky condo syndrome, the mm -hmm. challenge in Fort McMurray. We've had instances in Edmonton and Calgary and other municipalities. So, uh, look, you can buy a warranty right now on an iPod, on your wedding ring, on your coffee maker, mm -hmm. on your car. But you you don't necessarily get the standard warranty that you need on the largest purchase you make in your life. Right. And a lot of people don't have the expertise necessarily to know whether or not the home is built to quality. By providing or ensuring we have a mandatory home warranty program, uh, evidence shows in BC when they brought that in that it there weren't a lot of payouts because of poor construction. The quality of the construction went up immediately and, right. and sustainable so that people knew that they were getting a quality product, and that's so important. Is the onus then on on industry mm. then to, to construct this? Uh, like, is that, is that you guys are the role in terms of leading the, the facilitation on this, or are you legislating it? Or no, we're working on legislation to create a, a new home warranty okay. uh, package. It's a, It'll be a a one-stop shop so that people who have warranty issues, manufacturers or homeowners know exactly where to go, exactly what the circumstances are, exactly what they're covered for and uh, about what the costs are going to be. The, the actual warranty is not going to be provided by government. It's still going to be provided by uh, private sector companies. There are right. three great private sector companies and a fantastic not-for-profit company that operate in Alberta. We've had a couple of other companies that have expressed interest in moving to Alberta to provide the service once this is set up, like they did in, in British Columbia. Mm -hmm. uh, so it will still be very competitive, and they'll offer different varieties of products, but there will be some standardization on what you can get. Let's talk about uh, some of the other challenges that exist out there that, uh, you know, you, you, know, you walk into this portfolio. Um, 
what, what are some of the things that were immediately in the first 90 days that you, you know, you had to address right out of the gate? Actually, I think... Uh, Tomorrow is 90 days. Is it? Yeah, is <laughs> yeah. it 90 days it's after? okay. It's that, that early, I know. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you're still dealing with them for at least another day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, there there are lots of uh, uh, challenges. It, it would be, I, I mean, you walk. we walked into the portfolio, and uh, I, I feel like this portfolio probably has more stakeholders associated than anyone but probably education and health care because – there are a lot of municipal councillors. There are a lot of people concerned about the future of their community. We, but we're not just municipal affairs. The majority of the standalone Department of Housing also moved over. So we, we cover uh, Alberta Social Housing Corporation and most of the housing issues that occur uh, around the province. And then most people don't know uh, the Alberta Emergency Management Agency is also housed in municipal affairs because municipalities run emergency services and we right. run the overarching uh, provincial coordination system for alerts and getting messages yeah, issues, out. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you know, issues around flooding and disaster, disaster mitigation, but the Slave Lake issue was probably the number one issue that we addressed. I think uh, it was two days after I was sworn in, uh, I'd called the Premier and asked her if it was all right if we went to Fort McMurray because, it, I mean, a third of this, the city burnt to the ground. People right. lost their homes and they wanted to know that the government was still aware of their issues. And so the, I remember the premier saying, if you don't, you're fired. <laughs> she, you know, sort of, you better be up there uh, right. because it is such a critical issue. So we went up, and the first thing we communicated is that this isn't just getting through uh, the, the devastation. It's about rebuilding your community, too. It's about building every community in Alberta. Right. And so you can't just get them through the point where some of the buildings are resurrected and the damage is cleaned up. You've got to start to help them rebuild, just like we're doing everywhere else in Alberta. So, well, we're we're, we're 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 nearing just about the end of our time here, but I got one more question for you. Um, since the premier took office, um, I understand that there's a, a you know there's a lot of change going on. There's a lot of change for you and and, and many other ministers, uh, some new and and some just have new portfolios. But let's talk a little bit about the the, the cluster strategy behind the scenes that allows for different portfolios to interact with each other and collaborate. Um, I think that's very cool, and I think Albertans should know about it. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about, for those folks who don't know, what, what, what that's all about? Uh, well, it's still evolving, so it's hard to nail down exactly what it is. But uh, the government's, uh, we're, we're building pods right now that work at, the, uh, at, the, at multiple levels within government, from the executive through the ADMs, through the deputy ministers, and the ministers, too, work in pod so that we can take issues like uh, like housing, which isn't just an issue with municipal affairs. It's an issue in seniors. It's an issue in, in uh, um, the, uh, Super Dave's ministry, the super ministry on social <laughs> services. Okay. I mean, th they're collective uh, issues that don't fall within uh, one particular minister's mandate. And it, I'll tell you, it's so energetic to sit around the table with a group of people and, and have all levels talking together. Uh, I mean, I, I think... Uh, in 10 years almost of being an MLA, this is, we had all of the ministers and the deputy ministers all in the same room sitting down and talking. And, I mean, it sounds like common sense that you would do that, but it, it really hadn't been done because that's a large group of people. Right. And there's the political discussion and there's the civil discussion and there's the bureaucratic discussion. And, but boy, the energy in the room and the collective understanding about what we're working on together. I. I personally haven't been this excited about being in government since the first day I got elected, and I can say without a doubt that I think a lot of the civil service and my colleagues feel the same way. It's really exciting. Well, that's great to hear. I, I think it's fantastic. We're going to wait just to – I'm going to ask Evan here. Evan, we've got any questions in the uh, the chat room that we want to put to the minister. If you can find one, dig it up. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, once Twitter. again, we're here with uh, Honorable Minister Doug Griffiths. Uh, he's the MLA uh, for Battle River Wainwright, and uh, he's uh, braved the cold to come out here to Sherrod Park and come into the studio here and talk to us about what's going on in uh, his new position as the Minister of Municipal Affairs. Um, we've talked about a number of things today. We've talked about uh, the, the new home warranty that we're working on, right? We've talked about uh, the first mile in terms of Internet connectivity going into the rural communities, which is which is just fantastic. I think it's going to really open up a lot of opportunities for folks, not only for agriculture, you know, businesses that, may, you know, have been struggling with dial-up on the ranch and, and those kinds of things, but, uh, but for, for folks who are outside of agriculture as well.
but just live in a small rural town. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a question from the audience, so uh, we'll have Evan put it to us. Sure. This was on Twitter from Itty Bitty Spider. In question period, when questioned about donations, you stated very specifically that your CA took no checks from illegal donors. Why? Why did I say? I, the specifically no right. checks, I think, is what he's trying to well, to donations you say no, well, checks, no money, no cash, no nothing. We don't take – look, we've had a policy – I'll I'll never forget <clears throat> the very first year that I was elected. We had – I believe it was – it was one of the towns or maybe it was the school board wanted to send some people and they sent a check to pay for people who were going to come to the golf tournament. And we sent it back and said we, we don't take any money from – now <clears> – <throat> Most forms come in a check. We don't actually take anything by cash. I don't know that we have anybody pay by cash because you've got to issue a receipt. So um, cash makes me nervous anyway. But the the point is that we don't take any money from any uh, uh, one of the prohibited corporations. We never have. doesn't mean we haven't received one, but we've always sent it back. And uh, we've gone through and checked time and time again. In fact, we do a yearly audit to make sure that we haven't accidentally had a check because everybody's volunteer, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody could take the check, not check it, put it in the account. So we do a yearly audit and check to make sure that we haven't accidentally received one from a prohibited corporation. If we do, then we send it back. We've always done that. Yeah. Good. Good question. Um, thank you, Itty Spider, for your question. Ladies and gentlemen, again, we are going to wrap up our show here today. Thank you for tuning in. The, the minister has got more work to do yet, even though we're towards the late part of the day. Uh, if you know anything about uh, Minister Griffiths, you know that he's one of the hardest working guys uh, in government and uh, it's a real pleasure again to have you on the show and we hope you, that you'll come back and see us again at some point anytime. maybe when it's a little warmer anytime <laughs> no, anytime I, we we still haven't talked about housing issues and initiatives stuff from emergency management agency there's so much good stuff going on so. well possibly maybe in another 90 days we'll do it like one one every quarter or something Sounds like that good to me. ladies and gentlemen thanks you again for watching fuselogic tv if you're watching this on youtube please uh, subscribe to our channel uh, please favorite the videos uh, that uh, are your favorite. And thank you again for watching us and supporting us. I'm your host, Walter Schwabe. Until next time, stay warm, have fun, and uh, stay out of trouble.